Wow, we even have the airplanes here, so <laughs> <laughs> it's the best podcast uh, advertisement where we can get. Welcome listeners to the podcast Communicate with the World, sponsored by Europe Direct. Don't believe tourists, we ask the locals. Hello guys, hello listener, hello and welcome to my first episode of my podcast. Today I'm welcoming Nila. I'm really happy to have you here and it's a, it makes me really happy that you're my first guest here, so welcome. <laughs> and yeah, we met eight years ago in Brazil. Now we meet again here in Innsbruck and it's going to be a travel podcast. So already this information, let's see that you are a really international girl. So first of all, how do you like Innsbruck? Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, having me as the first guest. It's a really big honor. And well, Innsbruck is um, awesome. I'm really glad to come back every time. It reminds me a little bit of Hunger Games, <laughs> actually, because everywhere you're surrounded by the mountains and I just, it's the movie stuck in my head. So I'm always like, ah, Hunger Games, <laughs> I'm entering them. So. Well, that's, you can see the north chain here. So <laughs> everywhere where we are, you have mountains around in Innsbruck. So. Everywhere I, you look, you see my I still don't get beautiful. her comparison, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, we're here to speak about your country. You are from Czech Republic? Czech Republic, so correctly. So, how do you want to, what do you want to say about your country? How do you describe if someone from abroad asks you, what should I, what should be my opinion about Czech Republic? <laughs> <laughs> and now you mean the landscape or the people? Well, more the people more the people. Okay, so if you enter Czech Republic, I maybe you will have this first impression that the Czech people are not that um, warm and not so welcoming. We are, I guess, uh, really honest and maybe the first impression is a little bit more cold, but uh, if you get to know us, I think that afterwards we are really warm and can be For um, sure, yeah. pretty uh, friendly. If they're similar like you, then <laughs> they are it's really built up good friendship and relationship. And one thing that it's also in my mind is that we are uh, hardworking people, I would say. Like, even in the village, even in the city, people are used to work a lot and make their living. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so, well, let's speak at first about Prague, about the capital. It's famous, many tourists are traveling there and, well, I think, Mostly of my friends have been there. Everyone says, wow, what a beautiful city. Can you confirm that? Yes, for sure. I came from the North Moravia and I come to Prague for study. Mm -hmm. So I'm already there for at least, oh, bad in math, but at least eight years for sure, maybe nine, maybe even more. Well, the time flies. Anyway, <laughs> the Prague is super beautiful. And actually I was also working during my studies in a hotel as a receptionist and people were coming there with the mindset or the opinion that the Paris is the most beautiful and romantic city in the whole Europe. And after, you know, the experience in Prague, for sure, we as a receptionist, we try to recommend them a lot of things, cool stuff to do. Uh, uh, when they were leaving, they have this opinion that maybe Prague is the most romantic city oh, really? in the Europe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a romantic city. A nice wow. One. Not bad. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, Prague is the new Paris. <laughs> it's going to be the headline of this podcast, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. cool. What, what else about Prague? How is the price level? Is it still cheap as in the past? Like people said, always it's cheaper because there's no euro, still Czech crowns. And well, you know, I would say that it's cheaper. Uh, but the thing is that now maybe with the economic situation and um, yeah, maybe now the differences is not that big, but for sure if you're coming from Switzerland or even I would say from Austria to from Germany, uh, you will be uh, rich there, <laughs> I would say. But the differences are not that big as they uh, used to be, for sure. Yeah, like Czech Republic is famous for their beer, so let's compare it with the beer price. Half a liter beer, how much would that be? Well, I'm not that much the beer drinker, but I would say like uh, 45 Czech rounds, maybe 50, 60. So uh, let's say one and a half euros. Around two years, I would say, because 
okay. exchange rate is 25, right? So okay. one of it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, which is definitely cheaper than here, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes in some restaurants it's cheaper than a water if you order a beer, actually. So um, make crazy, the math crazy. when you're there, and um, in some places it's really like that. That shouldn't be, but <laughs> well, it's a positive point if you yeah. want to have a party trip or something like Check that. Check it, guys, for sure like it, and I believe a lot of tourists too. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's move on. Let's go to the land side. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say about the land side of Czech? It's really beautiful. I made a road trip a few years ago. I really loved it there. So mm. how would, would you describe it as a local? Well, um, I would say that it's we don't have such a differences in heights, for example, as uh, you, Austria or Slovakia no has. Games. No Hunger Games <laughs> like that. We are more like, you know, these fairy tale peaceful uh, landscapes. Uh -huh. You've got a really nice, diverse forest, a lot of forests. Uh, the mountains are usually on the border of the other countries. But uh, what is really special and what is nice is the rocks. We have the sandstones and you can actually even uh, walk there uh, and it, you get the feeling that you're, you know you are on the beach and you can climb the, the rocks and have a really beautiful uh, view. And because it's not that hilly, uh, it's really nice for cycling. Uh, people are going to cycle there a lot and uh, cross-country skiing also. And for example, okay. in the South Moravia, you have a lot of wine fields. It's also really popular for the tourists to come there, you know, have their uh, time. There's, uh, yeah, huge wine fields actually. And the, um, in English, in Deutsch, it's Keller, I believe. Ah, uh, wine keller, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like now, the, the basements. Yeah, yeah, yeah wine where basements, yeah. you can try different ones and it's also really popular to do that. Nice. Is it possible um, to sleep there? Can you sleep somewhere outside and camping somewhere, lying under the stars? So. Well, I have to say that for sure in Czech Republic I found it much easier to, you know, just go uh, with your backpack and sleep somewhere under the sky because when we were doing a um, road trip with the girls here through Austria or even in Italy yeah, it was not so easy, right? super hard to find yeah. a place to uh, sleep under the sky and in Czech it's uh, almost no problem. Mm, cool, so cool, could really be cool. a really cheap holiday too, right? Yes, yes, ah. for sure. Like in Czech Republic, I believe, yes. Ah, yeah. And what's about security? Do you feel safe all the time you, in Prague or also on the land side? Uh, uh, me, yes, but I'm not that much watcher person, <laughs> I will say. I'm really uh, trustable, or how to say that, uh, that I have the trust in others. Okay, and, uh, but you believe the good in human. Yeah, but for example, if I should uh, say an example, I'm cycling uh, through the whole Prague uh, on my bike and I'm, I feel really free to leave it anywhere if I'm going to, with friends somewhere and I cannot even see the bike. I'm totally okay with that and the bike is always there when I'm coming back. So if oh, it's a good example, I don't know. <laughs> but even though if I'm coming back uh, home um, through Prague at night, walking alone a woman, I also don't feel insecure, fine. Cool. So. Oh, everything really positive. So I really want to go there already. <laughs> You've been there so many times. Yeah, true, but it's never enough. <laughs> uh, well, if you're yeah, addicted to enough. traveling, you always can travel somewhere, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, well, let's make a big jump from traveling to business. You're a CEO from your own company, and you often speak English, you told me already in advance. So how is it to be there as an international guy? Is it possible to build up business here or to work there in Prague or in the whole Czech just with English, for example, and no knowledge about Czech Republic? Uh, the language, sorry, about yeah, Czech? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say definitely yes. As I mentioned in the beginning, um, Czech people are hardworking people and usually in the big cities like Prague, Brno, Olomouc, you got there a lot of... Um, there are more the sedentary people who've got, you know, the work behind the computer like ID fi uh, IT finance and um, fields like this. In the villages and small cities, it's more about, um, um, yeah, if you're working in a factory or something like that or in the fields. But with English, English if you go to the cities, uh, it's super easy. In Prague, almost everyone can speak like 99%, I would say, 98 but uh, 
yeah, again, the math don't take me uh, that seriously, <laughs> uh, would speak English with you. And I have a lot of friends who are not even forced to learn Czech because they don't need it. Mm -hmm. So the international friends, they say always with yes, English? Okay, yes, cool. yes, yes. And Prague is actually, or the Czech Republic have a lot of successful startups. There are really a lot of talented people there. Uh, so I believe the job that you can get there would be super interesting. And at mm -hmm. the same time, uh, you will have no problem with the language. Nice. Even Spanish people are good there. Just with Spanish? Yeah, I believe so. But you will have to find your group. You know, you will yeah, not be okay. able to talk uh, that much as if uh, you were. So there's a big Spanish English. community there too. Mm -hmm, I would say yes. Oh, really? Cool. Oh, nice. Happy to hear that. Yeah. Well, cool. Really nice. So, is there something really additional what everyone should know about Prague or Czech Republic? What's your most favorite spot in whole Prague? Uh, in Prague. Oh no, Czech Republic. Doesn't matter. Well, that will be behind, um, that will be my really uh, favorite spot where my parents live. They actually live in a small village and uh, totally alone. And behind the, this really small mountain, if you climb it, it's a really beautiful view on the, you know, uh, whole countryside. But I'm not going to tell you where's the spot exactly because, you know, <laughs> it's a secret spot. <laughs> my parents would not be happy about it and I will not be happy I about it. I can tell you it's in Moravia. So. <laughs> Yeah, really Go there good. and search for it. Really, uh, yeah, good location. And if you find it, don't tell it to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are really a lot of beautiful uh, things to see. You have to come and see. Yeah, definitely. That's a good sentence. Check it out. Sentence. Yeah. <laughs> you all should check it out. Yeah, thanks a lot. It was amazing. Is there any important word that people should know if they are traveling to Czech Republic? Uh, well, I believe it's... Uh, always good to be grateful so uh, you can uh, learn děkuji it's thank you děkuji mm -hmm. děkuji děkuji okay i need to improve that <laughs> <laughs> and then be if you're asking for something maybe uh, please prosím prosím then the beer pivo pivo always important as we already said before um, how are you what means how are you jak se máš jak se máš okay that's already, I would say that's a good end. What means good to the end? Dobře. Dobreče. And so in this case, take him. And <laughs> it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot to make my first podcast. Well, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you too. <laughs> Don't believe tourists. We ask the locals.